Hi, this is Steven from Data Video, and today I wanted to give you some helpful setup tips for the NVS34 streaming encoder. And one of the things that you'll want to do is make sure that your streaming speeds are adequate, um, you know, as far as your internet connection is concerned. So in this case, you'll see that I did a speed test already. My upload was at 32 and my download was at 47. 32 is decent, so normally what we want to do, let's say we were going to target to go to YouTube at four megs up. We usually want to allocate two and a half times that target speed to make sure that we have enough upload. So in this case, what we would do is we'd want at least 10 megs available. And in this case, we would be, you know, adequate. Uh, we have plenty of upload speed. The next thing we'd want to do is find the device on our network when we're setting it up. And to do that, one of the easiest ways to do it is with Data Video's IP Finder utility, but that is designed for Windows systems. And today we're on a Mac. And so what I wanted to do was show you how to locate the device on the network on a Mac computer. And you can go to the App Store, which I won't go to today, but you can download a program called LandScan, which I'll open up right now. And we're gonna go ahead and do a scan of our network and we'll see that it found three devices. It found my computer, it found the router, and it found uh, Data Video Technologies, which is basically our NVS34 that we have on our network. And the IP address is 1010.20.181, and it has a corresponding MAC address. A MAC address is basically an identifier for um, the device on your network, and we usually have that information on a sticker on the bottom of the unit in case you were trying to locate that. Um, so in this case, since we know it's 181, we're gonna go ahead and pull up the IP address. And you'll see that I'm already logged in. And this is our HDMI input source that's showing, and it, it's expecting embedded audio. And at the bottom here is it gives us our status information for the input source that's connected. So in this case, my input source is 1080p, with the frame rate of 60 and we're running 16 uh, bits for audio sample. So here we go, we're gonna go to system. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about is setting up the network, because this is really, really critical to the box. Um, I oftentimes have customers that will try to set up a static IP for the box. And what will happen is the static IP will be fine, but the DNS information is not correct. So they'll call us and they'll say, hey, you know what? I'm trying to stream to YouTube, but it never reaches YouTube servers. And what we find is that since the DNS is not set correctly, the box has no way to find what YouTube.com actually is. And DNS is basically a domain name system. It's what the internet uses to translate YouTube.com into a corresponding IP address of the server that, that it runs on. So if that's not set correctly, the box has no way to understand what a name-based domain name is versus an IP address. So typically what I recommend to our customers is that they leave it at DHCP, which means it's dynamically assigned from the router, meaning the router will give it an IP address. And then what they can do is set up an, a simple address reservation in their router. And to do that, what I would do today, for example, is I would go to my network that I'm connected to, I'm going to go to Open Network Preferences, and then I'm going to go to Advanced. And under Advanced, what I would do is click TCP IP, and then right here where you see 101021, that's actually our gateway or our router location. So now that we know that, we can call up our router. So we'll go to 10.10.20.1. And you'll see that I'm logged in already to the router. Um, but basically that was to get to the router login page. And now that we have the router, you know, interface, we're set up, we would want to go to LAN. And not all routers will be identical in the way that they're laid out. But generally speaking, this is where most of the settings would reside. Um, so in this case, we'd want to check DHCP server. And you'll see that the pulling address of what it, where it assigns address starts at 2 and goes to 254 in this range. But down here, what you'll see is that I've already set, it, set up an IP uh, reservation for the box. It has the same MAC address, the IP address is the same, so 1010.20.181. 10, 
And what that does is it tells the router, okay, for this particular device, you're gonna always reserve this IP address and you're never gonna assign it to anyone else. So by doing that, if you were to have a dynamically assigned IP in the, in the encoder, normally it might have a lease of maybe seven days, maybe it might have a two week lease, and then after that the router might change the IP address. Well, what you would encounter is that when you went to call up the, the box again, as far as getting into the interface, you wouldn't be able to find it or it might be cached in the browser. So by doing this, we've basically reserved the IP, but by having it dynamic, we know that our DNS entries will be correct. And that concludes our troubleshooting video. Thank you for watching.